In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up this procedural stone or quartz material with insane depth and cracks, and of course, it's fully procedural. The tricky thing with quartz is that its look is in part due to the internal cracks, which you can't easily do with shaders only. Even with a lot of volumetric shaders to get this effect, the cracks won't interact with the light as they should. So we will achieve this beautiful crystal look in two steps. First, some geometry node produced cracks to get that crystal depth, and also, of course, some beautiful shaders. So let's get to it. First, I'm creating some base shapes to test the effect. And now let's move on to the geometry nodes tab. Add the geometry node system to one of the objects and rename it procedural cracks. With Ctrl plus L you can apply it to all the objects. We will create the cracks by instancing some planes over the volume of the meshes. So first let's create a plane that has about the same size as our base mesh. To get that, we need the bounding box of our meshes and the plane will be created by a grid. You can straight away plug in the vertices to the group input so we can control the resolution of our meshes. And for the, and for the size of our plane, you can compute the distance between the min and max bounds of our bounding box. It is usually a bit big for this purpose, so we can also add a math operation to divide the size by about 2. Let's clean everything up a bit. Now we need to distribute this plane object over the volume of our base meshes. We could use the distribute point in volume node, but it is a bit too dependent on the scale of the object in my opinion. So I'll implement a control to get a precise number of cracks without any density controls. To do that, add a new input parameter and name it cracks amount. Make sure it's also an integer. Duplicate the group input node and plug the cracks amount into a mesh line. Into a mesh line. Into the count input. You can set the offset to zero, it won't matter. Now we can already try to instance our planes over the mesh lines with the instance on points node nope. and put our grid in the instance mesh line to the points and output this. Increment the cracks amount to see some things and as of now all the planes are instanced at the origin of our meshes. So we need to distribute our planes over all the volume. To do that, we will set the position of the points of our mesh lines randomly in the range of the dimensions of our base objects. Add the set position node. We can just add a random value node set to vector. And for the min and max bounds, we can also use the min and max bound of our bounding box from before. Now the planes are seemingly randomly instanced over the volume of our meshes. To add a bit more control, I will plug the seed of the random value into the group input. And let's also add a random value to control the rotation of the planes. Also set to vector, set the min value to minus pi and the max value to pi. And plug that into the rotation input of the instance of on points node. We can also plug the seed into the seed input we created before. Let's tidy everything a bit. And after we realize those instances to work with them better, you can select all this, press Ctrl J, and this is the first step of our node group. In the node tab, you can add a label to call it instance cracks. Now to get a glimpse of how it will look in the end, you can add a join geometry node and the group input to get our source mesh. If we plug it like that, you will see that of course our planes are you will see that of course our planes are extending way outside of the bound of our meshes. So we need to curl all the geometry of our planes which is outside of the base mesh. We could use the mesh boolean operation 
but this node in the geometry node tab is way too inconsistent in my opinion, so we will use some simple tricks to fake it. First, we'll simply determine all the geometry which is outside of our base mesh with some simple math and delete those faces. And then, because it will result with some jagged edges, we will take all the boundary vertices of our planes and just stick them to the surface of our base mesh. Let's select all our meshes and set the crack resolution to something a bit higher, like 32. And you can also increment the cracks among to somewhere around 10. So now let's detect the part of our planes which are outside of the base mesh. The usual trick to do that is to compute the distance between any points of our mesh to the closest point on our base mesh. And compare that with the normal of the base mesh. If the two vectors are in the same direction, it will mean that our point is outside of the mesh. If the closest normal of our base mesh is in the opposite direction, it will mean that our point is in the inside. So let's compute that. Duplicate the group input node and add a sample nearest surface node. Nearest surface node. Set it to vector and for the value, plug first the position. You can already duplicate this node and set it up to sample the normal of our base mesh. For any points of our planes, this first node will get us the closest position on the base mesh. So to compute the distance between those two, we just need to add a vector subtract node. And in the first input, you can plug in the position of our points. Now to test if the relative positions of our two points is in the same direction or not regarding to the normal of the closest point, you can compute the dot product between this distance and the sampled normal. If you test this, you will see that all the points which are not black, so with a positive value, are outside of our base mesh. So we need to delete all those points. To do that, add the delete geometry node. And from the dot product, compute a compare operation with greater than. And just keep the value to zero. And now, as you can see, all points of our planes are really confined into our base meshes. Now let's implement the second step in which we'll take all the points of the boundaries of our planes and stick them to the surface of our base mesh so we don't have this jagged line. First, let's detect all the points of the edges of our planes. To do that, add a vertex neighbor info node and compare the face count with a less than operation node to 4 so that all vertices which have less than 4 adjacent faces are in fact on the outside of our meshes. As you can see here, it works perfectly. Let's just store the value as an attribute so we can use it later. And I'm going to call it cracks edges, which is a boolean value. Now to offset those points, we just need to take the sample nearest surface node from before with the position, duplicate all this, and plug back the mesh. So this will already compute the closest point on our base mesh to our edges we just selected. And to apply those position, just add a set position node and plug the value into the position. So at first, the behavior is not as expected, but we just need to plug in our, our selection from before into the selection of the, of the set position node, so it will only affect the edges of our planes. And here we go. As you can see, we don't have the jagged edges anymore. And this already marks the end of our second step, which was to fix the size of the cracks. You can select everything, press Ctrl J, and add the label, call it fix crack size. Now we already have all our cracks and as it's set up you can exactly control the amount of cracks you want and the seed of everything, which is pretty nice. But if you add a shader on it right now, it, it won't look as, as expected because in reality a crack is two surfaces really close to each other so that the light will come into the material, out into the cracks in some air and back into the material. So we need to give a bit of thickness to our cracks, which will be pretty easy to do. 
add an extrude mesh node and set individual to false. Now with the group input, you can plug the offset scale to create a new input and rename it cracks thickness and you can set it to a distance. Just lower it so it's really small. Because my objects are, are quite big, I can put about one millimeter. So the cracks are really small. And if you are familiar with the extrude mesh node, you will know that it only creates new faces and does not keep the original shape. As you can see here, if I increase the value, all the cracks are empty on one side. So we need to merge this extruded version of the mesh with our base mesh to do that at the joint geometry node. That the geometry node which is a bit better now and also add a merge by distance node right after that to make everything a single object. For the distance, you can take the cracked thickness, divide it by two and plug that in the merge by distance. All this created some new geometries, so we can also set the size of our new geometry to the store attribute from before, which was the cracked edges. Plug that in between here and right now, if, if you check the face orientation, it will look bad. So we also need to flip the faces of the extruded version of the mesh. Because the air will be inside all our cracks. Select everything and by pressing Alt, set a crack thickness of 1mm again. Now that the cracks have thickness, this is the end of the third step of the node setup. Join everything again and let's call it crack thickness. Now the final step is to set all the attributes and shading so you can move on to the shading tab and finish everything. After the joint geometry node, add a set material node and set that as an input. On our cracks flow, add a set shade smooth node. And right before that, to separate everything in the shading tab, add a store named attribute node set to boolean and just call it cracks so that all our cracks have this attribute set to 1 and all our source mesh have this set to 0. And this is the final step of the node group, which is the attributes and shading. And with all that done, we can move on to the shading tab. Into the shading tab, create a new material and let's call it quartz. And I'm going to set it into the geometry nodes of all our objects. First, let's remove the principal BSDF material and add a glass material. Right away, the effect is already pretty nice with all the cracks inside our meshes. You can set everything to shade smooth if you want. Now the first thing I want to do is to control the color of each of our objects with the single material. To do that, I will need to call the object info node and plug the color into the color input. Now on the object properties panel in the under viewport display, I can select a color for each of our material. The gemstones are already looking pretty nice. Now the thing with quartz is that the cracks are really rough and have a lot of bump while the outside is really often polished. So we need to set two different materials for the cracks and the outside. To do that, add an attribute info node. And as we set it into the geometry nodes tab, we just need to fetch the cracks value and plug that into a mixed shader node. That way we can have two shaders for the cracks and the outside. Duplicate the glass BSDF and plug it into the second input of the mixed shader node. And for this one, you can start by increasing the roughness a bit. You can also add some noise texture to drive the height of a bump node and plug that into the normal of this one. With a higher scale and a lot of detail, you can have some really nice effects. And because the outside is never perfect, you can also add a slight bump to this shader. Now to get the look even closer to quartz, we can lower the saturation of the base color here and add back this color with the volumetrics node. If you increase the density like this, it will probably get a lot, a lot darker. So now we need to tweak some render settings. In the light path section of the render tab, here you can select everything and just set it up to about 32 and just lower a bit the volume to 8. Now you can add a lot of color to your objects. Also, to make sure that the cracks aren't visible on the edges of our mesh, we are going to fade them out the closer we are to the outside mesh. To do that, 
duplicate the attribute node and set it to crack edges on the second branch of our material flow which corresponds to the inside cracks duplicate the mix shader node and set a transparent bsdf shader to the second input now you just have to plug the factor of our attribute into the fact of our mix shader node that way all the edges of our cracks will be transparent and thus invisible on the boundary with our base mesh as you can see the result is quite convincing compared to other methods and here we have it a fully procedural system using geometry nodes and shaders to get a really nice looking quartz or stone material like never before as usual everything will also be available for free on my gumroad hope you liked this tutorial thanks for watching and see you next time